Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and boy, are we in for an adventure today. I get a chance to work on a reel that, uh, well, it's quite rare, actually, and it's got a story behind it, so it's all the more fun to do that. This reel has been sitting for quite some time. You can see by the dirt that is accumulated on it, and uh, we took a look at this reel in a, uh, in a short, and uh, it says it's made by Sears Roebuck, and we're missing a badge here, and really couldn't tell much about it. Well, with the help of the YouTube viewers, we were able to find out the designer. The designer's name was Gar Wood. It was short for Garfield Wood, an individual, junior. His dad was a, uh, ra uh, a powerboat racer and powerboat, race, uh, powerboat designer. And interestingly enough, to this day, the boats that he built, which are the uh, Garwood boats, well, they were competitors to Chris Craft, and they're still being built today. Well, his son, Garwood Jr., had a mechanical uh, bent to him, designed a reel. There were, some of these were made, that he designed, were made by Finor, and uh, this one, I believe, was made by Shakespeare. I'm told by our viewers that the insides of this reel is very much similar to a Shakespeare Troll, uh, troll Wonder or Wonder Troll, I'm probably Wonder Troll the way they had their uh, uh, nomenclature. And we're going to see what we can do here to uh, take this apart, see how it's made. It's a mystery to me. See if we can get it working again. The problem that we have here is that this um, reel does not operate in free spool. This should be free spool. And that should be full lever drag. Well, we're not getting a free spool release here. And I don't know the cause of that, but we're going to take this apart and we're going to generally try and figure it out. <clears throat> we're going to start by removing the exterior pieces, and as I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, and if you do subscribe to my channel, please hit that notification button, that way you'll know uh, when it is that I am posting, and uh, if you see the posts, you can uh, select those that you may enjoy watching. All right, well, this is all total gut feel here. We took off what should be a free spool adjusting knob. We have two screws behind that. So I'm going to just use a little bit of penetrating oil to clean up some of the, the junk that's behind there and see if we can release this. This is a good time to tell you to take pictures as you're doing this. The reason for it is, well, you don't have a schematic. And if you're like me, from time to time you're going to forget a piece of the action. Well, if you do that, uh, you do that forgetful part, well, it could be uh, the end of your reel if you can't assemble it properly. Well, this is an older reel. I'm going to assume that that's an SAE thread and that, it's, uh, that it appears to be a 9 16 so We're going to take the handle off with that. Just going to use a, a box wrench to do that. And this is coming off in the traditional sense. This reel was sold by Sears under the Ted Williams brand. Ted Williams, of course, the uh, Hall of Fame player for the Boston Red Sox. And uh, Ted uh, Williams was an avid outdoorsman, fishing and hunting. I think he actually may have even had a show in the 1960s. And uh, that uh, he became a, a name spokesperson for uh, Sears. I don't know the years. I wish I did. All right, one, two, three, four, five side plate screws. And who knows what comes next? We're going to hope that we'll be able to remove this plate or some semblance of it when I remove the side plate screws. These are flat bladed screws. And you want to be patient with a reel like this. You don't. Uh, always have an opportunity to work on something like this. And you want to take care because, as I mentioned, the reel is old. It's probably 60 or 70 years old. And uh, being of that age, it uh, is unlikely you'll ever find the parts for it. There was an eBay search done on this. And they, these reels are held pretty rare. I'm not sure if they're desirable because of the way they work or because of the rarity of them, but they were selling in over a hundred, quite a few hundred dollars. 
which when you look at it and you think it's a Sears reel, where would you ever see that kind of valuation? But it's there. And it's there because of the uh, affiliations that we just talked about, the Garwood design and uh, manufacturer. Well, the one fellow said he has the Shakespeare Wonder Troll. It's this version. He says it's pretty simple inside. The idea of a, of a lever drag reel is that you have a drag plate and you have a pressure plate. And to get the drag, you either pull on the pressure plate to exert pressure and lock down the drag, or you pull on it. It's a pull or a push, depending on how the setup is. <clears throat> and that's almost like a clutch engaging in a standard shift automobile. When uh, the drag is on, you're in gear. And when the drag is off, you're in free spool. Well, this doesn't have free spool, so it says something is locked down in the reel. Well, here goes nothing. Let's see if that plate comes off and how it comes off. Well, just as I was about to take some of those screws out, I noticed the separation in the case here. Oh, there we go. So we're able to remove this, and that makes sense because there really is generally nothing on the back end of this other than it's implanted in a case. So that's what we have there. Now we got to figure out how to get this part off. Well, there's a nut holding all this assembly on. That's always a good place to start. Again, I'm thinking these nuts are probably... Let's see what we have here. Just going to try and get this off. This would be a tensioning nut hold the assembly in. And this is a good place to tell you when you're working on reels like this and you don't have a clue about them or you just have a general knowledge about what you might expect in here, then the best thing to do is go ahead and take pictures along the way because the order of these pieces and parts and how they come together is very important and uh, well usually you can have a schematic or something else that would give you that reference point back and in this case Oh, we're not seeing that at all. We have a nut. I'm going to line these up now. We have a nut. We have a washer. Two washers. We have a stud. A bearing. This is the pressure plate we were talking about. This is why you don't have any drag. Your drag is in the back of this. This is all salt encrusted. And this pressure plate is, uh, is pretty bad at the moment. All right, so you can see here how the lever drag is going to work. You pull this in, you pull it out. That's going to release. I just have a, there's a, a device here. I'm trying to figure that part out. that's going to hold this part of the assembly on. Now I don't see a release point on that. Which is unusual. Most of the time this thing would just push through. I'm just not seeing the release there. So we're going to just, we're kind of going on a gut instinct here. We're thinking that there should be a way to remove that and to remove the collar, but I'm just not seeing it. Here's a quick editing note. You'll see the reel is reassembled. I needed to spend some time after I did the video to redo the reel to remove the axle shaft that was stuck in the side plate. That became a key to enabling me to get the free spool uh, release. So I removed the axle shaft from the side plate. I also removed the collar that you saw me take off with the screws. There was a collar and a pinion gear on the spool assembly. All of that came off, it got cleaned, re-lubed, and reassembled uh, to enable that free spool to, to do as it should have.
We're thinking that there should be a way to remove that and to remove the collar, but I'm just not seeing it. It's a bushing. This is the axle shaft. I'm just not seeing it and I'm not going to force anything in the reel this age. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to, to throw a lot of oil onto the axle shaft. And we're going to buff this. So there's, a, there's not much you can do with a dry washer like this, the plate. But you can clean it as best you can. I'm going to use a mild steel wool to get off the old creases. And I think the, it's fair to say that the reason was we're not getting free spool on this is because the pressure plate has corroded to this drag washer. I believe that this drag washer is screwed on or glued on to the reel. <coughs> it looks like it's a leather drag washer, but I'm, I'm not sure. But that's got plenty of drag left on that side. This is the one that I believe has been corroded on. This is your pressure plate. It's going to pull in and pull out and apply the pressure to that. So we got to make sure that this is nice and clean and free of debris and any kind of spurs or the like. But overall, it looks like a pretty good uh, section. So this is kind of interesting, as I mentioned, it's a very relatively rare reel. It's a straightforward design. There's a lot going on here and a couple of simple movements. And you certainly want to make sure that as you do this, you take care with the pieces and parts. All right, that's, that's about as smooth as it's going to get. All right, there's a spring. The idea of the spring is when you engage, it's going to compress, and as you go to go to free spool, it's going to release and push this back. And just put that right back together again. There's not again. There's not much going on with this. We take that clean spool. Now we can, for the, to prolong this drag life, we can put grease on this, and then you want to wipe it off. So. You want to have just a light sheen on there. I'm just using regular fishing reel grease here. That'll help restore it as well. So put a little bit of grease on. Grab a paper towel. And pull that grease off. That'll allow you the contact that you need. The smooth side is the pressure plate side. And again, the whole idea of a lever drag is it's going to pull in, and then the spring will release it to free spool. So you can see how that's moving in and out. We're going to clean the case now. To do that, I'm going to use penetrating oil to get rid of the old greases. A lot of this can probably just be cleaned up with a paper towel. And you want to use the least abrasive of the pieces when you go about this. I'm still thinking there's a way to get this shaft out, but that's pretty tight. And I'm thinking if I push through on this, that's probably how that comes apart. But I'm just... Uh, there's a screw in here. That's probably what's holding this. There's a screw inside here. I'm also wondering what the adjustment is here. So this can be pulled out. Now I don't know if that's pulled out just to make it turn easy. It certainly does. If that's you pull that out to make that last stop, yeah, that's what you do. So when you want to go into max drag, that's the last stop there. And over on this side, you would think it would be the same, but it's not. The rest of the time, this is just turning free on a furrow. But we're learning this one. All right, take the uh, steel wool and get the old grease off the 
main gear, both sides. Beautiful metal on this one. Check the teeth. You want to clean the teeth. So you can do that a couple of different ways. You can come in with a, a pick or a screwdriver and run it through there like this. Particularly if you find a lot of old grease accumulated in there. In this case, I think all the old grease has been on the back and in the cavity in the front there. You can use a wire brush. That'll pull it out. And I always put a, a paper towel under the gear when I'm cleaning it because I don't want that out on my bench transferring to the next project. I'd rather just pull it off and put it on here, as you see. All right, we're going to wipe that down. Okay, let's take that shim washer then, put that on the, the gear. Put a little bit of grease onto the shaft, grease into the teeth. So it's interesting, the principles on this reel are not that much different from the modern day lever drag reels. Some of the modern day ones, of course, have more profiles and they have a um, smaller case and the like, but for the most part, the reels are not that different. Okay, well, this has been a little bit of a hide and seek game here, but I used the pick on the alternate one. I was able to get that done. And if the machine serves me right, we should be able to get this one done. There you go. All right. So we'll show you what we were meaning about the way that this moves internally. So this is going to be your preset. Here's that pressure plate. put our bearing on. I've oiled that bearing. There's a collar that went on top of the bearing. There are two tension washers. And then there was this, and I think the easiest way to do these is probably to take the nut and everything at the same time. That way you don't have to worry about centering it all. All right, let's just tighten that down. Okay, so we finished tightening up the nut. And kind of here's, uh, here's a moment of truth. You put this into free spool, which is the, the back end. You should have a pressure plate that runs free of the spool. Or in other words, take the spool and run it. Hold, you can hold that pressure plate. Run the spool. There's no drag engaged, and that's going to allow the free spool to run. When you move your lever drag over, that locks in this plate, and the only way that it will turn is in unison. You'll have your free spool and your pressure plate turning. So that's kind of it. That's what we can do with this side. Uh, it, is it perfect? No. Did we learn a lot from this reel? We certainly did. What's left? Well, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup now. We'll reassemble it. This reel belongs to Gary, and Gary is certainly going to have a story to tell about this reel. I'm not sure if he's intending to take this uh, out fishing or anything, but uh, when he learns the value of it, he may not. All right, I'm going to clean it up. We'll turn the camera off for now. We'll come back with a final piece. Okay, so the reel is back together again. I'd be lying if I told you it was easy. It wasn't. There was an issue that I encountered with trying to get the anti-reverse dog to work. It all works now. But boy, snaking that thing in, I'm sure I didn't do it the right way, but I did make it work. I also noticed... I had to take the reel apart again. I noticed when I took it apart that I was able to remove the bearing on this side of the spool that was behind that copper catch plate that unscrewed here. Unfortunately, uh, I was kind of uh, working through a couple of different things. I didn't film it. So 
I hope what you learned out of this is a couple of things. You learned the how a lever drag works, how this will pull that plate on that side against the drag washer to get the, um, the tension you need to hold it. And when you release, well, you can go into free spool now. This, uh, this reel didn't have free spool before. It certainly does now. So when you release the tension on that, the pressure plate backs off of that drag washer. And as you put the tension back on, well, it locks in and you reel turns. So don't use this as an absolute in terms of how to fix this reel should you ever encounter it. Again, there's too many steps that I took offline when I noticed that I couldn't, uh, couldn't merge the anti-reverse dog with the spool and I apologize for that. So the reel did clean up beautifully. It is a nice example of a pretty rare reel that has easy technology in terms of the uh, lever drag, free spool, adjust, full drag, and uh, this one can go fishing again if he chooses to do so. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Apologize for some of the short stepping there, but I did want to share the final results with you. So to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.